Hey there YouTube, this is BK Bootercross and this is a requested video from a YouTuber named Chevy for Life 1000 and he wanted me to make a video uh, teaching him how to brake drift or explaining it and it's very very simple, hopefully I shouldn't go into deep detail with this because it's very simple to do. So all you gotta do is take your braking force, put it all the way to the front, depending on the car's weight, it differs weight or uh, engine position. This is where your braking uh, pressure uh, deals into. Uh, reason of that is is because whenever you're drifting and you can ha you can have full counter steer and you can control your car to brake. While you're doing that, your car will uh, you know it, you will slow down a lot. It will slow you down. But the points that you may be getting it may differ from good to bad because if, if you slow down too much, when your car starts uh, pulling into the corner. And you have to get a larger angle, but then you just start slowing down even more, and then you reach under 25 miles per hour, which makes you uh, unable to gain any more points. It just kind of sucks because then you, you kind of um, making it worse for you than it already is now. So, uh, brake drifting was started back, I would say, about uh, mid mid range, about four to three. Oh, I heard of it at four to four, and knowing me, that's whenever I start doing things, people have to start complaining about it. But anyway, so. All you're doing is just pressing down your brake uh, very so gently throughout the corner, and that's basically about it. So, if you were starting, if you're just not starting it, I would recommend getting a a, uh, a big car like a Celine Super Cab uh, versus Cadillac. There's a Cadillac in here if you have the DLC. It's not that. A, a 59 Cadillac or any kind of old old cars like you know like these. These these would work as well. Don't use any short base cars. Brake drifting with short base cars. Uh, that's not the smartest idea. Or if you're only using like 400 horsepower, like a 400 horsepower Barracuda, Barracuda, that's a good way to learn. And I'll show you guys how to uh, get it started. So first, I'm going to select my S15. I'm going to go test drive. And then we're going to go on Sunset, so I can do two videos in one. So Sunset is a track where brake drifting is somewhat high demanded, but then not demanded. You don't really have to brake drift the first corner. I just choose to so I can get a little bit more point. Now then, uh, without brake drifting, I've managed to pull in 80,000 on Sunset. So, I mean, you don't have to, but it can help. And if you're just one of those guys who are anti-brake you know, brake drift, whatever you want to call it, then this video is not right for you. Now then... Just to get everything uh, started situated, let me show you the tuning setup for this car. And there you go. See, I use less braking force so that you know I don't over brake it and then I lose much speed and whatnot, and then it's all bad. So, brake drifting. It's really not complicated. Don't mind the positive camera in front of this car. I had this car for at least about a year now. So, I mean, tune to tune. I base mostly I tune for myself. But anyway, you can see. My rear tires or my rear brakes are not lighting up. It's all my front brakes. My front brakes will be the one lighting up. So this may be a little difficult for me to explain um, while I'm, uh, you know, doing this. So let me pop this thing up. This may interfere with my drifting. This thing is a big distractor to me. So never, I usually don't drift this thing on. But we're in this gear. It's flooring it, and now we're starting to drift. So I usually like to start brake drifting mid midway through the corner, so I can have all my speed built up. And don't hit the wall and now I start so you can see that the car starts to pull in whenever I increase the braking force and I have full counter steer and the amount of pressure I uh, I put to the brakes is the amount of angle I would get out of it you can see I did lose a little bit of speed that's why it's, it's uh, most important to use this technique at the somewhat the last bit of the corner like right here and bam 32,000 simple as that so Right now, it looks pretty easy. Me pulling 32,000. I'm mean, I'm even kind of impressed. I thought that was a sloppy line, but I mean, it's 32 to 32. My highest is 33 on this, but that's just with practice. Now then, I do not have to brake drift to take this corner. It's just you know different speed, different speed and wobbles and the way you enter it and etc. 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 With brake drifting, you can do a lot of things. Whenever you're taking a corner and you're about to lose it, or let's say you started a corner too early and you don't want to uh, risk straightening out losing uh, more points than you already lost uh, hold down your brake and swing your car out it's like for instance let me see if I can show you with this corner right here I may not be able to just let you guys know 
So if I can't, then I'm sorry for wasting uh, some time. Well, actually, I didn't start that early enough, and I just swapped. Should I go? Okay, we don't have to see that. All right, uh, let's go back to restart. Now, now I showed you what I was doing. What I was, you know, when I was ex someone explaining it, let's see you guys can do it. So, if you're on this track, just turn around, try to go backwards, and practice. Now, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna, it's gonna look like this. You're gonna be drifting it, and then you're just gonna hold down your brake too hard, and then you're gonna lose it. So that's okay. I've done the first, I've done that many many times. If you don't do it, well, that's that's even better. So what you need to do is, whenever I brake drift, I only use about this much braking force, depending on how fast I'm going. The, the speed varies on uh, the amount of braking force I use. Now then, my throttle play goes into play too. Sometimes I'll be gassing it 100% all the way throughout the corner, and my uh, steering will be fully counter steered. Now then, you don't want to wobble whenever you uh, whenever you brake drift. That's not a uh, that's not a good thing to do. Uh, reason why I'm saying it's not a good thing to do is because uh, for, for some reason brake drifting like slows down your uh, your speed in your front tire, so if you can just just you know keep it steady. Right now I'm brake drifting, but now it stops. I'm gonna hit the wall. Ouchie! Wow, that caused a lot of damage. But uh, anyway, so the. That's all it is. It really is not that much to it. Except all you gotta do is hold down your brake every so gently. And just keep keep, keep it throttled. And you can see I'm using a little bit and the drifting slow motion is just still going. Now then, uh, if someone's behind you, at least try to respect respect their speed. Like they're one of uh, one of the fast guys who drift really fast and carelessly and just doesn't care about points. Which I hate those guys. Just to avoid conflict, make sure you just don't brake drift. And just let them pass. And then once once let them pass, go back to doing whatever you're doing. Now then, the pros and cons about brake drifting. Brake drifting is saved me multiple times when I was uh, actually drifting online. Remember, I drift online, and this this is the number one corner where people have their most spins out because when you start drifting uh, uphill at an angle like this, then why am I gaining points? I have no idea why I'm gaining points. Okay, anyway, oh, I must have picked the wrong track, but uh. Anyway, right now I'm showing you I'm not really using any brake drifting right now. My brakes are not lighting up except for right now I'm about to slam down my emergency brake and my brake. So I'm not brake drifting. So, it's like I said, whole corner one. Now then, uh, this is, I picked the wrong one. I picked the club, I think, of this track. This isn't straight. So knock off at least about, yeah, knock off uh, uh, about two grand from that score. Well, actually, three grand because by drifting the way I was drifting, I think I would at least about I would have had about 30, 30.5. But anyway, so let's say someone's uh, drifting in front of me, there's a car ahead of me, and I want to be able to keep my drift going without having to straighten out. Like, let's say I'm in a drift right now. Well, I mean, okay, I'm in a drift right now, and a car spun out and he's losing it, he's not stopping his car because you know they don't feel like stopping the car. So, what most of the guys do, they don't want to go off the track. So if you're ever dealing, dealing, uh, if you're ever in this situation and you just want to keep going, just you know, like I said, gently apply, uh, apply your brakes. And if you skip back a few minutes, you've seen that my uh, braking force really wasn't that high. It wasn't going any more than this uh, when I was uh, showing you guys how to do it. Not not the whole first corner thing, but when it was at the finish line. So I was only using a little bit, a little bit of braking force. Now then. Uh, if this were to happen, the only thing you have to do is just once again gently apply your brakes, and then you can slow down a bit, or you can still maintain your drift. Uh, if you're already inside the grass or whatever, do not do it. I wonder. If, I wish I could show you guys a good example of why not to brake drift in the grass. Well, for me, I'm used to it, so I'm, I'm able to, but I still have problems with oversteering. But it, it's a really, really good technique. I can show you a few tracks that will be useful too. Um, we we all know Top Gear. That's one. Uh, top Gear, the house, other, there, there's yeah, Sunset, there's a few other ones, I'm just right now, I'm a little, you know, I'm not really paying attention right now, but there are many, many tracks out there you can test this on, if you really want to practice, you can, always, you can go on Benchmark and do a little, you know, I would say Benchmark Layout F, if you have, if you have it, it should be very easy, you can go slow, fast, whatever speed you want, Layout E, just, all this is a circle, so, you know, you practice one, one turn going to the right, then you practice going to the left, and then you go to this track, and then so on and so on, and just start doing bigger and uh, better tracks. 
Now then, most tracks like these, you don't have to break break drift on, but if you want to, you can. It's, it's not it's not a big deal. Uh, just don't overdo it. Don't break drift throughout the whole entire track. It's going to give it a bad name. Because I have been told that I break drift the whole entire track, and that's something I I don't do. Now, the Fujimi. Let me see if I can find you guys a good track uh, to show you where break drifting is, is somewhat needed. You don't only really have to do it on Fujimi, but there are a few corners that will be helpful. Uh, I should change my car. This is going to gonna be this is gonna end well. So. Uh, I guess I'll try with S15. I already have it. No need to change it. So we're gonna just go up now. I, I break drift. Um, I wouldn't say a lot on this track, but only if I have to. Usually on the first corner, I I do just get everything started, just like get a feel for it. Now, I guess you can call it like a test because you know sometimes my car decides to feel a little funny on some days whenever I drift, and so I just have to get used to it. I don't have a lot of time to get used to it. I'm just gonna go, so I'm not really gonna be drifting the first corner, which most likely I am, because everybody say that I'll have drifted. But, uh. Um, just follow me throughout the whole entire track. Once you get to a certain spot, and I'll show you. All the corners, I'll show you guys how the, how you'll be taking, uh. Most of the corners. Don't mind my angle, I'm just trying to hurry up and get there. And this car just faster than drives. Now then, uh. Let me just pop this thing up real quick. Whenever I engage a drift, I hold down everything. So let's say I'm engaging a drift, and this is this is what it's gonna look like. RPMs up. Everything is being held down. Reason of that is because if I'm holding down my front brakes, it's gonna pull my car into. The, it's gonna like somehow uh, spin me out. And when it spins me out, that's that's not good. And yes, it will spin you out if you're not doing it right. So that's why I hold down the emergency brake to uh, to balance it so that I don't have that problem. And it's a good way of starting it. Now here we're about to approach a corner where uh, brake drifting can be very useful. I think I started that. I think I screwed that up from starting it. Weird. So it's all about finding the right gear, right speed, and then next thing you know you just start gassing it throughout the corner. And you can see it's taking a one and I hit the wall. I don't mind that. It's just a little too fast. Like I said, this thing distracts me. One corner I have been trying to practice on is right here. I've been learning how I can drift this whole entire thing without having to hit that wall, which I just did, so that's cool. Another another section is right here. Now, my wheel may be a little crazy, but you can see that I'm brake drifting throughout the whole entire section. Now then, uh, if you're with a wheel, uh, I wouldn't really recommend this unless this is how you started to drift with. Like, this is why my first gear. But if you're with a wheel, brake drifting may not be for you. Just keep drifting regularly because the speed should carry you on through the uh, corners if you know what you're doing. Now then, uh, I'm just keep on going through the track. I don't think there's any more sections you, you should have to brake drift on. This part, if you brake drift on, you're really gonna hurt. Uh, you're really gonna hurt your points because I did this once, this whole entire corner once with an Audi. You can see I only have a good angle, but I am I slowly start getting it. That's really not. Okay, drift. You ask me. I, I'm losing more points than I am gaining, so you do have to be careful whenever you break drift. So I can't really find. Uh, be, I think it's uh, Iberian or whatever. That may be a track where it can be helpful to break drift on. But like, for instance, whenever you start it. But that's really all there is. Need all, all there is. All, all that you have to know about break drifting. All you gotta do is just apply all your braking force toward the front. Adjust your. Uh, oops. Your braking braking pressure. If it's front engine like this, the S15, just keep it between 120 and 130. That's what I do. I never put it at 200 because if I tap it once, and next thing you know, my car is spinning out. I'm over exaggerating that, but that's basically what it's like for me. So that's all it is too. Just a little bit of brake, balance it out with your gas. You cannot brake drift without having a little bit of throttle. I mean, you, you can do it, but you're gonna have to be using your emergency brake, and you know, from there on, you're really just. <laughs> Really, just relying on the relying on the momentum that you got from your from your car. So that's how I engage it, or uh, or stop like without having to overdo my angle or underdo it. So if I'm in a drift and I don't want to uh, get a larger angle or a, or an angle smaller than what I have, I would just hold on everything for a quick second so I can base. It's like resetting because I'll I'll be relaxed. I'll be able to straighten back my wheel. And start up again. It's like a brand new drift. So I'm pretty sure that's gonna get 
best and start getting some crap too but i mean people do it in real life so i mean you can't complain there is a video of a guy actually break drifting on a highway it wasn't the rain so i'm pretty sure people are going to start complaining if i you know for the guys who hate break drifters but thankfully uh my fans or aka you guys you guys don't care how i drift you guys just drift how you want to that's that's you know that's awesome that's what i like so now that's the solid is too i kind of did overdo this video I did make it a little too long this video should should have been at least about five minutes long but i just wanted to go in you know detail which i shouldn't have done but that's all it is so you need to have high now oh one more thing uh low psi uh if you're doing this with low low tire pressure um you may want to lower your braking force I'm just saying you may want to do that uh reason of that is because your front tires is already gripping you can see my psi is maxed out because you know I usually have cars set for sunset or any other kind of long track but uh if you're drifting a low low PSI I recommend you lower your uh, your tire pressure because it will pull you in even faster uh, the cars it does vary on the cars the engine position and the weight so just keep that in mind like for instance the Hummer the Hummer you know that thing weighs 6,000 pounds after the weight reduction so 200 <laughs> percent let's just say that and yes I do try to break drift with the Hummer every every now and then but I can't really do it because the Hummer is so heavy and it's somewhat impossible front wheel drive cannot be done with all wheel drive yes it can be done with an all wheel drive believe it or not uh, I'll show you my Bugatti uh, let me see all wheel drive is more complicated let me let's just say this rig drifting in all wheel drive is way more complicated than real wheel drive and that is how I learned now then it's not overdoing it if you choose a brake drift with all-wheel drive. It's not a crime, and this is my RAM setup. I think because my Bugatti will never be will never weigh nine thousand or four thousand pounds, and yes, it is. This is my RAM Bugatti. So I'm just gonna change the setup real quick. So I can show you guys the setup for all-wheel drive. Front-wheel drive. <laughs> That's funny. You don't. Have, you can't. It's impossible to brake drift with front-wheel drive. You're already doing it. Basically. Uh, let me see here. All right. Can set up. Okay, see, this, this is what I was trying to tell you guys about the, uh, the weight <laughs> and whatnot. But anyway, the uh, the torque for your all for your all drive tunes to break your foot are very very important. If you have it at 50, it will not work. If I mean, I I, I prefer uh, 65 or lower. If it goes any more than that, you're gonna start struggling. And you have to be very 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 gentle with this because it's it's at least about three times as worse for all drive uh brake drifting at all wheel drive is very very more is very very more complicated because you have to deal with front power which would be fighting which would be fighting your brakes and can possibly gri uh, grip your car more than it is like the front of it because it's, it's trying to slow it's slowing down your wheel spin like your uh your rear tires will be completely unmatched to the pavement as well as your front tires so those will be spinning at a higher rate which is how real wheel drive cars are, except that it's on and off. It's trying to fight, it's trying to fight your braking, your braking force. So with all wheel drive, I don't really hold it. I don't really have a full counter steered. I can't really explain how I do all wheel drive because it's been a while since I've uh, did all wheel drive. But this, this, the same technique applies uh, to both. So just keep that in mind. So once again, if you're gonna do it for all wheel drive, the braking force must be low. No, yeah, the, the braking pressure must be low. And your balance must be all the way to the, uh, to, uh, you know, 100% to the left. Before then, when I used to do this, I would drift at 90 braking force, and I'll get accused of brake drifting when I when I only had that 90, so that I could enter my corners a lot better. And whenever I beeped it up a little more, that's when I slowly discovered brake drifting. And then my friend Edgy uh, hooked me up. He told me how to do it for all wheel drive. So uh, I'm not gonna go and take full credit for this because he did kind of show me this. And that's basically about it. That's all I guys have to know. I hope hope I uh, lectured you guys enough where you guys can understand. Um, you know, brake drifting. Just make sure not to overdo it. If you overdo it, it will hurt your points. Now, the rumor about the speed that uh, does not matter. It does not matter how slow you're going. I can take a C class. That's my bad. A C class or whatever car I choose to, and pull somewhat the same scores as I pull on a uh, uh, let's just say my regular car, it's like Sunset. Since that's a nice, a, a nice track, it's flat. Don't have to slow down. Don't have to speed up. Just keep it at the same speed. So you can go as fast as you want. I can go slow, and I can still get a lot of points. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope I explained a little bit about it, or I may have covered all of brake it really is not that hard. Once again, hold on the brake from breaking all your forks at the brake, and all your all your braking forks at the front, and there you go. Well, subscribe, rate, comment for another video. Uh, just let me know. And sorry, um, I try hard. I didn't really. I kind of forgot to do the, uh, the sunset. I'll do that uh, tomorrow. So I'm, I'm trying really hard not to post two videos at once. I would add that video in here, but it would make it extra long. 